CPU Galaxy. Hello and welcome to the CPU Galaxy channel. Yeah, today we will have a closer look at Intel engineering sample CPUs, what's behind this and how can you identify them and why are they so interesting for some collectors. Basically, an engineering sample is nothing more than a pre-production version of a semiconductor. Beside the development of a chip, the manufacturer is producing prototypes for characterization and verification to find bugs and failures. Depending on the issues, they will develop several steps until you get a fully working product. So engineering samples are in general strictly confidential and they are not supposed to appear anywhere or on eBay or so. But how the hell does this happen? Yeah, beside the manufacturer, the customers have also to develop their application and therefore they get always also a bunch of engineering samples, not the early ones, but samples from the last steps. If they are fully working, these chips find also somehow the way then to the market. And then we are already at the point why these engineering samples are so interesting for collectors. First, they are pretty rare. The older, the rarer. For some reasons you can find tons of samples from newer Xeons or Pentiums, but it's almost impossible to get a 286 or a 386 engineering sample. Second, some retro gamers like newer Xeon or Pentium samples, some of them have still an unlocked multiplier and this is great for overclocking purposes. Some of the samples are available with different clock speed than the original part is supposed to be, for instance, the Pentium Pro with 133 MHz, the lowest on the market has 150 MHz. And the last point, for some reason, it's fascinating to have a piece of technology in your hand which was still in development phase and contains maybe a failure. And how can you identify an engineering sample from Intel? Mostly you can find some words which leads you already in this direction. For instance, confidential, sample or the words not for sale. Second, you have to check the spec number. Only engineering samples starts with Q on the beginning. So let me show you here some of my samples and the markings. Yeah, first let me show you this uh, Pentium Pro here. Let me zoom in a bit. So. Here we can nicely see the numbering KB8521EX, so this is the common uh, type of the Pentium Pro, and here 133, which means 133 MHz. And here we have the spec number, it's Q0815, this means it's definitely an engineering sample, so this Q numbering is only available on engineering sample CPUs. On the back side it's also very interesting. We can see here obviously the words not for sale. So this is then definitely 100% indication for an engineering sample. If you compare it now with a regular Pentium Pro CPU, this is a 200 MHz version and here we can see SL254 which means it's just a regular CPU from the market. So the next one, it's an i7 CPU and here we can also see Q1H7ES. So we have again this Q on the beginning of the aspect number, which means definitely it's an engineering sample. And over here we can see the word confidential. So also a nice piece but not that rare. You can get it from time to time on eBay. Here we have an older version of an engineering sample. This is actually a 286 sample. The only thing we have on the top here is Intel sample, not for sale. Here a 8, which indicates I think it's 8 megahertz or so. And yeah, so this thing is working. I tested it already and is also a very nice piece of my collection and definitely very hard to get. The next one, this is an embedded version of the 386, so it, the package is completely different to a normal 386 we know so far and this has also a gold cap on the top. 
it's called uh, 8386EXI and we have again the Q8042 numbering. So the Q leads you again, it's an engineering sample and also written here a sample. This is by the way also a very rare piece and hard to get. The next one over here, this is a 486SX2 with 50 megahertz and again the word sample and the numbering starting with Q. Also a very nice piece. Actually I believe this is a very early engineering sample because we have uh, no uh, numberings on the ceramic substrate. Underneath the die is exposed so I got it in this condition and we can see that this 4086 has an additional row of pins here around. In comparison again to the other 4086 we can see nicely there are more pins on this uh, package. With the microscope I checked already so it's definitely a 486 and a really early sample. The next nice part we have over here so for the package we can see already it's obviously a Pentium MMX overdrive and here on the fan we can see uh, 150 megahertz ES is for engineering sample and again the Q a spec number Q0904. If you remove uh, the fan here we can see here inside the numbering it's A80 503 150 so this is the usually numbering for a Pentium MMX with 150 megahertz but uh, this is not the original numbering for an overdrive CPU and here we have also ES and the spec number with Q on the beginning also a very nice and a very rare piece what else do we have here this is also a very nice engineering sample, obviously a Pentium 2, and here we can see also Intel Confidential and the Q numbering and ES. Unfortunately, the CPU is not working. I tested it in several mainboards with different clocks, but I was not able to get a boot screen. But nevertheless, it's a nice part of my collection. The last one I'm going to show you here is a Pentium 2 mobile CPU. Again we can read here nicely sample and we have over here the Q761 spec number. I hope you liked my video and if so please leave me a comment below or let me know if you have any other nice engineering samples in your collection. Subscribe my channel if you don't want to miss any further content and don't forget to hit the notification bell. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.